One more example problem dealing with the Doppler effect. As you stand by the side of the road, a car approaches you at a constant speed, sounding its horn, and you hear a frequency of 80 hertz. After the car goes by, you hear a frequency of 60 hertz. What is the speed of the car? So we know our Doppler effect equation. We hear a higher or lower frequency because of motion either towards or away. Now in this particular case, the observer is not moving, us. And so this equation simplifies and we have V over V minus plus V of the source. All right. In this particular case, we're not given the actual frequency of the car's horn. But we are told two different situations. So as the car is driving towards us, the car is the source. The car is the one that has the honking horn. As that drives towards us, we hear, so F plus or minus is 80 hertz. That's what we hear. The second situation is we're standing here. The car is continuing to drive away, and now we hear the 60 hertz. So we have these two situations, the car approaching us, we hear 80 hertz, the car driving away from us, we hear 60 hertz. Now, by the way, if we really were on the side of the road with the car driving by, we would hear that hertz changing, getting higher and higher as it approaches us and then lower as it drives away. This problem, by giving us a specific frequency we're hearing, is essentially assuming the car is driving directly towards us. So essentially we're standing in the middle of the road. And then somehow we magically jump out of the way and then jump back to the middle of the road to hear the 60 hertz. I know that's a little silly, but just trying to simplify the problem a little bit for us. I don't know the speed of the car. That's what we're trying to find. So that is one unknown over here. We don't know the speed of the car. We don't know the actual frequency either. So we have two unknowns, but we have two situations as well. So we can write out these equations and solve the system of equations. So in the first case with the car driving towards us, the frequency that we hear is 80. That would equal the actual frequency that we don't know times we're going to use the speed of sound is 343 because they haven't given us a temperature or any other value to use thus we assume the 343 the v of the source is the speed of the car that's what we are looking for now the sign we need that negative sign because the top of those two signs represents the motion towards so here's one equation with two unknowns. The other equation is going to be similar, except for we hear 60. It's the, going to be the same F naught. We don't happen to know what it is, but it's the same. The car is traveling the same speed. The problem tells us it's a constant speed. The difference is going to be the sign in this denominator. So the sign is different because now the car is driving away from us. So we need to do a little substitution here. We know F naught is the same. We know V of the source is the same. So let's just solve for F naught. So 80.
over 343. This is F0 from this left-hand equation. If we put it over here, in place of F0, Now, this is not the only way to go about the substitution, but most students are familiar with substitution, so that's why I'm approaching it this way. This 343 cancels. That's nice. We end up with two terms that have the V sub S in it. Let me scroll up a little bit so I have a little more room. I'm going to bring the 343 plus Vs up here, so cross multiplying, and that leaves me with the 80 times the 343 minus Vs. Now I can factor through, I can also, maybe I'll do that. I'm going to divide by 60 just to make the numbers I'm going to work with smaller. So 343 minus Vs. So factoring through on that right side, I'm sorry, this lag in my computer, I don't know which letters and numbers are going to show up. Fill in the blank. So factoring that through, and then 8 sixths is 1.33 Vs. Let's get the Vs terms together. I'll bring it to the left so it's positive. And then subtract the 343. Divide by the 2.333. I'm getting 49.0007. Let me check my sig figs up here. So the numbers we're given are the 80 and the 60. Those are both three sig figs. So three sig figs is correct for our answer. This car is traveling at 49 meters per second, which is just over 90 miles per hour. So apparently we're standing on the side of the freeway. Kind of a crazy idea. So the Doppler effect wraps up this chapter, which is great. We will continue with waves in the next chapter. But we're going to talk about what happens when there's more than one wave in the same medium at the same time and some applications of that.